In the last two videos, we used this algorithm called PPO, and today, we are going to keep that streak going. But this time around, we will use it to create a table tennis AI. Now you might be thinking, oh, this is easy. We can just build a table tennis arena, throw in a couple of ragdolls, and let PPO figure out the rest, just like the other videos. And technically you would be right, but you would also be dead, because that'll take about 100 years. Table tennis is a lot harder to solve than bowling or being Spider-Man. So unless you're a really gifted and healthy toddler, this won't work for you. Instead, we are going to break this problem down into a four-point plan. Here's how this is going to go. Step one, create a walking AI. This AI has two goals, move towards a target and don't fall over. Step two, create a table tennis aimbot. Using a few physics equations, we can predict where the ball will go and use this to plan out shots in advance. Step three, extend the walking AI by giving it a secondary task. Keep your right hand in the box. This box will move around randomly, so the walking AI will have to gain full control over its right hand to succeed. Step four, combine our AI with the aimbot. We will tell the AI to move its hand wherever the aimbot goes, while also telling it to stay on its side of the table. This will allow the AI to execute the same shots the aimbot does, effectively making it a fully functional table tennis player. This is a great plan, and nothing will go wrong as I'm the greatest programmer alive. So let's get straight into the walking AI. The first thing we need to create a walking AI is a ragdoll. Luckily, I've already built the perfect physical specimen in a previous video. This little beauty is six feet tall and weighs in at about 85 kilos, or if you're American, about 773 cheeseburgers. It also features 12 joints, 13 bones, and spherical feet. We will take this ragdoll and hook it up to a large neural network. The structure of this neural network will be the same as before, each joint in the ragdoll will send information about its current state, and the network will tell the joint which way to rotate. Our AI's job this time around is to figure out how to move towards a target. So we will give our AI a sense of direction by telling it which way the target is. This is where things get tricky. Walking is a complicated task, so we will need to give the AI a well-crafted reward function for it to succeed. To start with, we will give the AI a large reward for every single time step that it stays upright. This is essentially the AI equivalent of force feeding, which will aggressively guide it away from falling over. Once the AI can stay on its feet, we will give it a small reward for moving towards the target. This reward will scale with how fast the AI moves, and will also double as a punishment if the AI moves away from the target. Finally, we will give the AI a punishment for moving its limbs too much. You can think of this as a taser that will go off when it detects sudden movements. This will give the AI a sense of energy, encouraging it to move as efficiently as possible. These three factors will guide our AI towards a walking technique that will be fast, reliable, and efficient. So our work here is done. The only thing left to do now is run the learning algorithm. Or in other words, we wait. See you soon. Our first learning session has gone really well, and we now have a ragdoll capable of walking. You can see that the AI relies on fast, tiny footsteps to move around, which are kept in motion by the most active pelvis since Wilt Chamberlain. You may have also noticed the odd head movement, which it does despite being punished for it. I actually have no idea why it insists on this. My best guess is that the AI is smuggling extra information into its neck, which it uses in the next time step to help it walk better. Ironically, the only part of this walking technique that resembles a human is the arms, which occasionally shift to help the ragdoll maintain balance. Nevertheless, it gets the job done, so we are free to move on to the next step, which is the paddle aimbot. So let's get to it. The goal here is to hit the perfect table tennis shot. 
But if we want to do that, then we need to predict how the ball will move. This is easier said than done. The ball is very light, so it will be greatly affected by things like drag or spin or the Magnus effect. Luckily, we can ignore all of this, because this equation will give us a good approximation of the ball's motion. This doesn't account for everything though. Our ball can bounce, so we will need to figure out when that happens. Let's run through an example. We know that our table has a constant height, and we can use that number to figure out how long it will take before the ball falls into it. With a little bit of rearranging, we arrive at this quadratic equation, which can be solved for time. We can then plug this time back into the approximation, which will give us the position of the bounce. Since our table is not an infinite plane, we will also need to check the x and z axes to make sure that the ball actually hits the table. In addition to this, we will reuse the calculated time to figure out the velocity of the ball at the bounce. From there, we can simulate the bounce by flipping the velocity's y-axis and applying some decay. This routine of detecting bounces can be completed as many times as necessary. Eventually, the ball will take its final bounce off the table. At this point, we can start calculating exactly when to hit it. First, we will define where the strike is going to happen. Then, we can rearrange the approximation again to find out exactly what the ball will be doing when it gets there. This is where things get interesting. We need to hit our ball to the other side of the table, so we will need to give it enough velocity to get there. And we will also need to figure out how to do this via a paddle strike. The first part of this problem is quite easy to solve. Essentially, I'm going to steal my own code. This will calculate the required velocity for the hit, but getting that velocity through a paddle strike is a little bit trickier. Let's look at this from a more visual perspective. We know how fast the ball's coming into the strike, and how fast it needs to come out. What we need to figure out is how fast the paddle should be moving. In maths terms, this will consist of a normal and a velocity vector. For the normal, we can simply use the average of the incoming and outgoing velocity vectors. Using this direction, the ball will bounce off the paddle like this. Now, you might be thinking, wait, this doesn't work at all. There's clearly a difference between the velocity we got and the velocity we wanted. This is why we add velocity to the paddle. The reason we chose this direction for the paddle is because it's parallel with the difference. So if we set the paddle's velocity to this difference, then we can be sure that all of that speed will be transferred perfectly into the ball, and hence make up for the difference. The only thing we need to look out for now is the energy that's lost in the bounce, which we can easily add back by moving the paddle faster. But other than that, we've solved this puzzle. We now have a fully functional table tennis aimbot, and while it isn't perfect, it's good enough to hit all sorts of shots precisely, and it should serve as a great guide for our AI on how to hit the ball. But what good is a guide if we have no way to use it? So with that in mind, we can now move on to step 3, giving our walking AI control over its hand. Surprisingly, this is the easiest part of this whole thing, and it's relatively straightforward to have our AI learn this new skill. Our AI will be given a new target, represented by this box. This box will move around the ragdoll periodically, and our AI's new job is to move its right hand towards it. Normally, we would have to train a new AI with extra inputs, but luckily, I already added the extra inputs into the network before in anticipation. You can think of me as an AI, trying endless amounts of random shit and occasionally learning something useful. As well as giving our AI a new target, we will need to give it incentive to move its hand towards it. It's important that we don't change the original rewards and punishments that allowed our AI to walk, since it may unlearn this skill if they aren't present. What we will do instead is add a new reward on top of this system. This new reward will scale with how close the right hand is to the box, which will encourage our AI to minimize the distance between them. Surprisingly, this is all we need to add, so we only have one thing left to do now, which is wait. See you soon.
Our second learning session has gone well, and we have successfully expanded our AI skill tree and given it control over its right hand, which it picked up quite early. Due to the random teleporting that the target did, the AI can pretty much do anything with this right hand. It can wave, it can draw circles, or it can even pretend it's using a shake weight. The walking technique is basically the same as before, but there is a small difference here that I thought was pretty interesting. Since our AI is no longer T-posing, there is more weight pulling it down to the left. It compensated for this by leaning slightly to the right. This is disturbingly human-like. I mean seriously, try holding your arms out like that. You'll feel your body do the same thing. So our AI has done its job beautifully, and it's now ready to become a fully functional table tennis player. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. This concludes part one. In part two, we will combine our ragdoll and aimbot together and then have a player match against itself. Special thanks to K-Gene. They could have chosen any of these cosmetics, but they chose that. If you think you can do better, join the banana fish cult on my Patreon. You'll get to make your own fish and you'll appear in my future videos.